using fences to help control cane toads. This information is based on research and field work conducted by Frogwatch and the Stop the Toad Foundation. It is possible to eradicate cane toads from an area in the wet dry tropical regions of Australia because of the cane toads absolute dependence on water and the fact that they have no biological mechanism to store water. This means they need access to moisture every few days. Cane toads are forced to congregate near a water source to survive extended dry periods and can then be easily found and removed. This is especially the case in the Victoria River and Kimberley regions of Northern Australia where it gets very hot and dry. By using the technique of toad busting or the hand collection of toads, Frogwatch and the Stop the Toad Foundation have shown that all the cane toads can be removed from a particular water source. This method involves people out at night using bright spotlights to find and collect the cane toads, but it requires a significant effort to achieve eradication. The effectiveness of the technique is limited by the efficiency of the operation, the number of people available, the percentage of the toad population active on the night, and the times at which they are active. Research has shown that only about 25% of the toads might be active on a given night and that toads continue to move to water right throughout the night. Successive night toad busting is more effective in removing toads from an area but you cannot easily cover the entire night period and so some of the active toads are missed. Fencing can greatly enhance the effectiveness of the toad busting and allows cane toads to be removed with much greater certainty in a significantly shorter time and requires much fewer people resources to achieve eradication. Exclusion fences are fences erected around a water body to deny cane toads access to water. Barrier fences refer to long segments of fencing that are used to shut off corridors that cane toads move through. Whilst exclusion fences are usually temporary, barrier fences can be left in place long term. Barrier fences provide a way of stopping cane toads moving into an area. They also improve the efficiency of toad busting in the area and significantly increase the effectiveness of cane toad traps that are placed along the fence. Because the cane toads are held in the area by the fence, as they move along the fence they become exposed to the effective field of operation of the cane toad traps and get caught. Barrier fences can be used quite effectively to stop toads migrating into an area or repopulating an area after it has been cleared. By denying cane toads the chance to rehydrate, the exclusion fencing strategy dramatically changes their behaviour and swings the balance in favour of the control strategy, making it possible to remove all cane toads from an area. As cane toads come out of their refuge places to rehydrate, they are blocked by the fence and will stay along the fence trying to gain access to water. This allows people to collect them much more efficiently as it is a case of walking the fence lines and picking them up instead of searching through the bush and possibly missing some. Because cane toads cannot get access to water, the ones that need water on the first night remain on the fence all night and into the next day. If not removed, they will die from water loss. Those with adequate water reserves can get back to their shelter site but may die during the next day or will be even more desperate for water the following night. Toads with really good refuge sites may survive six or seven days. The fencing is easy to erect and can be used in most locations to increase the effectiveness of control techniques. Even natural systems can be fenced using this technique. Late in the dry season, the water level has receded and there is usually clear ground around the remaining water. This allows the fence to be erected without major clearing work. During the late dry season in North Australia, there are not many native wildlife species that are likely to be impacted by the fence active in these areas. A mesh panel at the base of the fence stops cane toads but allows native wildlife access to the water. The main species of concern in the area are ground-based species like Latoria inermis or Peter's frog and they are able to easily pass through a 16 mm square mesh. Tests showed a 43 mm snout vent cane toad was too big and unable to pass through the mesh. 
a 60mm marbled frog was able to pass through the mesh. Snakes present in the area can move through the mesh or climb over it depending on their size. Other animals can jump the fence or climb it. With careful construction, the only animals needing water that are blocked by the fence are cane toads. By using different sizes of mesh along the bottom, the barrier can be set to block different animals. In areas with no Latoria inermis, the shade cloth can run right to the ground, blocking even metamorph cane toads. Construction of the fence. The erection of the fence is reasonably straightforward, as it is almost self-supporting and does not need major strainers. Star pickets and droppers are all the support that is required. We use star pickets on the corners and a dropper tapped into the ground every three to four meters. The fence is approximately 60 centimeters high and there is a 20 to 30 centimeter flap pulled out on the ground. By the time the toads hit the fence, they are already on the flap and so are unable to burrow under the fence. The barrier is made from shade cloth or similar material and is held in place by wires at the top and 10 centimetres from the bottom. The bottom wire is to give the fence the strength to withstand wallabies and other animals and helps to keep the bottom flap in place. The fence has spaces to help space the wires and keep it tight. These also make it easier to roll up and move the fence. It is a good idea to prefabricate the fence so you do not have to build it on site. If the fence material is rolled up, it can be rolled out at the next location in just a few minutes. Drive in the pickets, stand up the fence and the basic erection is complete. A dam like this one was fenced by four people in a little over an hour. The final stage is to make sure the gaps and depressions in the ground are filled and the fence is pegged or anchored to the ground. Once fenced away from water, the toads are in real trouble with trials removing over 90% of the toads in the area on the first two nights and every toad within seven days. Toads have no answer to being denied access to water and all the toads will be in trouble within seven days, most within three to four. In some places, toads will be fenced inside the barrier as they refuge in the cracks in the ground around the water source. These toads need to be collected and removed. Our trials have shown fencing dramatically increases the effectiveness of toad busting. For our trials show that on the first night in an area toad busting without a fence we get about 60 toads per person hour of effort. With a fence being used a rate of 216 toads per hour of effort was achieved. On the second night without a fence a rate of 48 toads per hour of effort was achieved. A rate of 142 toads per hour of effort was achieved with the fence. The fence more than trebled our efficiency. With fences, around 80 to 90 percent of the entire toad population at a site is removed in two nights. Without fences, this figure drops to around 40 percent of the population. Using fences greatly decreases the total number of days needed to achieve actual eradication of the toad population at a site. With fences, it's about six to seven days. Without fences, 12 to 15 days. The other key aspect of the fence strategy is that more control sites can be active at any one time as the visit to a fenced site can be in daylight and fewer people are needed per control site. Overall the fences are a very major advance in cane toad control and need to be more widely used. We need support to fully implement the strategy and may yet be able to stop toads. You can help by volunteering or by making a donation. Please visit our websites for further details.